Jim Lord is joining us now for Financial Insights with Lord's Financial Planning. Jim, good morning. Good morning, Aaron. Uh, in the past few weeks, we've talked about life insurance, so mm -hmm. let's dig into that a little more. Well, let's just talk about term life insurance today, okay? okay. And, the, and the different types of, of term coverage that you could get. Okay, okay? so what are those t different types? Well, you have to remember term is term. It's good for a term of time. Now, there's annual renewable term, there's a 5, 10, 15, 20 year level term, and there's decreasing term. Okay, well, decreasing term, why would anyone want that? Well, if you have a decreasing obligation or a decreasing debt, that would be a good application for this. And sometimes it's referred to as mortgage insurance. Your mortgage goes down every year. Uh, if you have a decreasing term policy, it can match up with how the mortgage is declining and pay it off in the event of your death during your mortgage. Okay, how about level term? Well, level term, again as the name implies, is level coverage for a term of time. Now, if it's 5, 10, 15, 20 year level term, it's going to have increasing premiums along those years. In other words, every time the end of the contract, the, the five, ten years, it's going to go up. Um, so that's how level term works, Sharon. Okay, well, talk about that last type. Oh, that annual renewable yes, type? Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, annual renewable starts off with a lesser premium than, say, a five, ten, or fifteen year premium contract. But over time, it increases. And if you've ever been to a, an air show where, you know, the jet's taken off and at the end of the runway it goes straight up, that's kind of what happens to your premium as the policy gets really old. It just gets very, very expensive. Well, I imagine there are pros and cons to each type depending yes. on your situation. Yes, yes there is. Um, I think another thing, too, to consider is that is the term contract you're applying for or you own, is it convertible? And if you don't know that, you need to ask the individual who you acquired it through and have them explain it to you. Because you want to know that you might be able to change it over to some form of permanent later on in life if you want coverage to continue, but you don't want the premiums to keep going up. Aaron. Well, is there a good way to know how much coverage you need? Well, the best way to know, of course, is to get together with a, a trusted financial planner and to put together a plan. But as a rule of thumb, we could say eight to 10 times what your salary is. So uh, let's suppose you have a salary of $50,000 a year, uh, $400,000 to a half a million dollars worth of coverage would not be uh, an excessive amount of coverage, Aaron. Okay, well, Jim, we are out of time. Thank you, as always, for sharing your insights with us. Thank you, Aaron.